Hello everyone, thanks for joining us this afternoon for this British Lymphology Society session for Legs Matter as part of Awareness Week. Whether you have swelling in hot weather or after a long journey, or whether you have swelling all of the time, or if you'd just like to find out more about lymphedema or chronic edema, this session is for you. Please submit your questions in the Q&A or chat box. Um, and also, uh, we hope you enjoy our video, which is coming up now. Hi, and welcome to this Legs Matter Live Lounge event by the British Lymphology Society. We have four trustees uh, presenting today's session, including myself, I'm Rebecca Elwell. Um, I'm a proud trustee of BLS and also the Macmillan Lymphedema Advanced Nurse Practitioner at the Royal Stoke University Hospital. Hi, I'm Lorraine Brown. I'm a lymphedema nurse at the Royal Surrey Foundation Trust and a trustee for BLS. Hi, I'm Anna Rich, clinical specialist nurse in the lymphedema clinic in Nottingham and a BLS trustee. Hi, I'm Margaret Sneddon, vice chair of British Lymphology Society and research fellow at University of Glasgow. So our presentation today is all about not ignoring that little bit of swelling. So this is a super important message for those of us interested in chronic uh, long-term swelling. And we're going to tell you a little bit more about it. So I hope this will be useful. So if your feet, uh, ankles or legs start to swell suddenly, if there is a rapid onset as a result of injury or illness, you should always seek advice from your GP or healthcare professional, as there may be a number of reasons for sudden onset swelling, including a blood clot, fracture, infection, or other potentially serious medical condition you may require treatment for. So this presentation is not about swelling, which quickly comes on. However, if you get swelling regularly, or you've had it for some time and it doesn't go away, your body is telling you that things are not working the way in which they should. And you may have chronic swelling or lymphedema. It's likely you haven't heard of the word lymphedema before, or if you have, you may think that it only affects people who've had treatment for cancer. But lymphedema is a term for failure of your lymph system. Your lymph system is a complicated system which drains fluid from the tissues around the body and has a part to play in your immunity. So if your lymph system fails, it can lead to swelling, skin and tissue changes, and infections near to the area. We use the term chronic edema or swelling that's been present for three months or more to describe swelling in the feet and legs, which may happen due to a number of underlying causes. Some of these reasons include the veins or lymph vessels that aren't working properly. It might be due to an accident or injury. It may be due to infection or reduce mobility or activity, so spending long periods of time sitting down, and it might be due to previous surgery. Any type of surgery has the potential to cause long-term swelling. The swelling may also be caused by some medical conditions, for example, failure of the heart or liver or kidneys, altered blood chemistry, if you have a blood test and there are changes, for example, a low blood protein level, or due to being overweight or obese. Certain medications can also cause swelling, including some blood pressure medications like amylodipine. If you're taking one of these and have chronic swelling, ask your GP for advice. Compression garments may be, may be prescribed if your swelling is related to a circulatory or lymphatic problem, However, there are more sessions around compression this week, so look out if you want more information. If you have swelling in your legs and feet, you should see your primary care practitioner. This may be your GP, practice nurse, or local pharmacist to seek advice about why this may be happening to you and what you can do about it. The most important thing is never to ignore it. Lorraine is now going to tell us what the important things are to look out for if your legs are swollen and how to examine your own legs and feet. Thank you. Thanks, Becky. Um, so as Becky says, swelling in the early stages, it can fluctuate. So what we'd advise is that you get familiar with what your legs look like. Um, this means uh, looking at your legs, standing up, sitting down, looking at the front and the back, 
be familiar with the contours, know what your own legs look like, what the skin colour is like, so you can be aware of changes in the early stages. Um, lymphedema commonly fluctuates in its early stages, so it may not be there in the, in the morning when you get up, and it might be there in the evening when you go to bed in the early stages. So it's important not to ignore it at that stage because it's much easier to treat and has much better outcomes if it's treated earlier. Um, skin changes to look for, uh, Anna's going to go into more detail on that, but if you notice a change in the colour of the skin or the thickness of the skin, that's something to report and get help for. Heavy aching legs, uh, this can be a precursor to swelling or it can be at the same time as swelling. So people can develop heavy achy legs with their swelling or can have heavy achy legs for some months or years before they develop swelling. So these are symptoms to look out for and get advice about. Um, swelling in its more advanced forms can cause um, hardening of the tissues um, and a drawing in of the tissues, often around the ankle. Um, sometimes if left, um, lymphedema can also have a more fatty appearance um, and can cause misshapen. All of these conditions, the hardness, the drawing in, can cause a misshapenness of the tissues. And although these are quite advanced changes, we do commonly in lymphedema clinics see them missed and left for years before people are referred. So we say, if you notice any of these changes, please don't ignore them. Um, please get referred. Um, swelling is not normal. So now I'm going to just talk through how to examine your legs. Um, so I've got a little video. This, uh, these legs are post melanoma surgery. So there's a scar on the left leg from melanoma surgery. First of all, we want you to look at both legs, um, looking for differences between the legs, um, looking for differences in shape and um, then we'll, yeah, so then we'll go closer in on the foot and we're going to be doing the pitting test. Um, and that's when um, you press into the um, skin and um, you see if you can leave a pit in the tissues. Um, so we'd recommend pressing up to 20 seconds into the tissue. Sometimes at one second is enough and you can get the, the pitting really easy. Then you just smooth your hand over the area just to see if you've left a pit. And now on this video, I'm just showing the um, pinching the skin at the base of the toes. And that's a way of checking if the skin is normal. And if you can pinch the skin up, that's normal. Um, we would want you to have a close look at the ankle area. It's very common to get swelling in the ankles. Can you see the bony prominences of the ankles? Um, are there any obvious vein problems there? Um, we then would want you to repeat those checks going up the legs. So you'd, we're doing the pitting test now on the calf area. You press in and you smooth over the area to see if you've left an indentation. So it's not normal to have an indentation in your skin after pressing it. If you're getting that, that's a sign of swelling. That's something that um, is a simple thing that you can do yourself at home to look out for the early signs of swelling. So we'd want you to do that in the evening before bed. You could check it again in the morning, see if it's gone away. These are all important things that the nurse or doctor you talk to would want to know. Um, and then we'll repeat that on the thigh. Um, and then we'd also want you to check higher up. So swelling, um, particularly after cancer treatment, if you've had lymph nodes removed or radiotherapy, swelling can commonly occur starting higher up. So it can happen where you've got swelling in the um, thigh or hip area or the genitalia or the buttocks. And the swelling can start there and then sometimes move down the leg. We much more commonly think about swelling starting in the ankles and moving up, but it can be the other way around. Um, and these are commonly missed things that you're not necessarily aware of. Um, we'd want you to check for temperature changes and sensation um, alterations, uh, which can be part of surgery, but can be related to swelling as well. So just a few little tips on what to look out for um, and how to examine yourself. We'll now move on to Anna, who's going to tell us a little bit more about skincare and what to look out for and how to treat it. Thanks, Lorraine. Okay. So we need to think about cellulitis um, and red legs. So people can present with red legs for a variety of reasons. Um, and it's really important to establish the underlying cause um, and treat this appropriately. Um, one of our increased concerns for people with um, chronic edema is the risk of developing cellulitis. And you can see um, a really nasty cellulitis in this picture here. Um, as well um, as the, yourself becoming um, unwell with flu-like symptoms and the risk of developing sepsis, um, lymphedema, cellulitis can then cause your uh, lymphedema to worsen. Um, it's therefore really important that we recognise it and treat it promptly 
and then look at long-term management um, of your lymphedema to minimise uh, the risk of developing further cellulitis. Uh, and we may also need to look at a course of prophylactic antibiotics, so antibiotics to reduce your risk of developing cellulitis again. Okay, so skin care is really important for everybody to carry out to look after um, their legs and maintain um, this as part of their daily routine. Um, for people with chronic edema, it's, it's really, really important. Um, and we would encourage you to be really self-caring with your skin care wherever possible. Um, but in certain cases, people may need help with this from a partner, carers, community nurses. Um, so the important parts of skin care um, include regular washing of the skin. So maybe in the bath, the shower, if you can't do this to get a bowl of warm water um, and use emollients, moisturizers as well. It's really important to be washing um, in the skin folds between the toes and actually making sure these areas are dried properly afterwards. Um, using regular moisturizers, also known as emollients, um, which you may have been prescribed uh, by your doctor or you may have bought yourself. Okay. Um, so moisturizers can be applied as lotions, creams, sprays, ointments. It's important that you're aware of any allergies that you may have um, and avoid anything um, in contact with your skin that you may be allergic to. Make sure the emollients moisturizers are applied regularly. Um, and not too sparingly, apply plenty um, of the cream. Um, they should be applied in a downward direction as you put them on, um, so they go in the direction of the hair follicles and again reducing a further risk of infection. So emollients um, help to promote and uh, protect the barrier function of the skin and you can see this in the picture on the right where um, we've got a healthier barrier skin, uh, barrier um, to the skin and a compromised barrier on the right hand side which allows um, allergens, um, in, increases the risk of irritation, uh, skin breakdown and again cellulitis. Okay. And now Margaret's going to talk to us um, about how we can use mo movement and activity to help our bodies reduce any swelling and using um, exercise for this. Thanks, Anna. As um, Rebecca said, swelling can happen for lots of different reasons, but it may mean simply that your lymphatic system needs a bit of help and needs you to move more. Now, um, being active is good for lots of things, your heart and lungs, just generally feeling good, preventing chronic diseases and improving muscle strength and joint flexibility. But it's also key in preventing many problems that cause swelling of the feet and legs by ensuring there's good blood flow through our veins and that the flow through the lymphatic system is also able to get rid of fluid and toxins the body doesn't want or need. And it doesn't need to be a workout, but um, the more active you can be, the better. So just try to move a bit more, sit a bit less, get up regularly. Um, anything you can do that's active is all good, but don't start things off too suddenly. Build up your activity gradually and monitor the effect. So warm up, don't start doing vigorous exercise immediately and build that into your daily routine. Just try and move a little bit more. If you're taking part in any particular exercises, pick something that you enjoy. But if you have persistent swelling, it's important that you do see your healthcare um, practitioner to determine the cause and start appropriate treatments. But whatever you do, doing these things to keep active will help in any treatment be more effective. Walking is great um, for preventing and managing swelling. And if you have stairs in your house, try and go up and down the stairs just a few times a day. That's really good for you. Swelling of the feet and legs may put you off being active and going out because it's much more of an effort or because you can be uncomfortable. Healthcare professionals, especially podiatrists, can help you get well-fitting footwear that will help you feel comfortable and safe when you're walking. 
as well as helping with treatment for the swelling. There is a session on the Les Matter Lounge that you can look into if you want more information about that. Um, deep breathing is very good for stimulating both the circulation and the lymphatic system. So if you can take a few deep breaths several times a day, that will help to get things moving. And it helps if you can fully expand your lungs. And we're going to show you a clip just now, just suggesting a couple of different exercises that you can do. Deep breathing is really useful for stimulating both your circulation and your lymphatic system. So it's good if you can try a few times a day to take some deep breaths that will fully expand your lungs. Stretching your arms either out to the side or up the side of your head is a useful way to do this, but just choose whichever one is easiest for you. Uh, gravity can cause us to make the smelling worse, so try and avoid sitting still for long periods of time. If you can get up and move around at least once an hour, or raise your feet up on a stool when you're sitting, and regularly move your feet. Here are another couple of exercises you can do to stretch your ankles and feet. Try these simple foot stretches. Start by just wiggling your toes and then circle your ankles slowly one way and then the other. Then give your calf muscles a good stretch by pulling your toes up towards your knee and you can feel the stretch there. Then stretching it out in front. Do this five or six times and repeat it during the day and you'll give your calf muscles a really good workout. You can add to that by stretching the front of your foot. And if you're standing, you can rock backwards and forwards, but make sure you can hold on to something to keep yourself steady. These are very simple but effective exercises if your mobility is a bit limited. So I think uh, the important thing is to remember is that swelling is not normal. It might be due to injury infection, problems with your heart, kidneys or high blood pressure, problems with the veins or just not being active enough. And if you're overweight that can make things much more difficult. Some medications, so always check with your doctor if there's anything that you're on that might be contributing to it. What you can do about it though, regardless of the cause, after you get it checked out and get any um, particular causes addressed, is look after your skin, be as active as you can, but try to lose a bit of weight if you feel you're overweight and maintain a healthy diet. If it doesn't resolve, ask for help again or ask for referral from a lymphedema practitioner as it may be that you need compression therapy or other treatment. Be sure to check the information on the Les Matter website and the British Lymphology Society website. We hope that this um, session has been useful for you and helping you to understand that swelling is not normal and should never be ignored. We've given some simple tips on both preventing problems with swelling and helping reduce the swelling. We're happy to answer any questions, but please also look at other events this week 
and the resources available on the website of Lives Matter and for more tips um, on the British Lymphology Society a campaign website for everybody can. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. I hope that you uh, found our video interesting. I hope there was some tips and advice there that you can take away. Somebody has said that they were sitting up um, to watch more and I found myself doing that and also carrying out the foot and ankle exercises and somebody else has commented that um, actually it's great advice for all of us um, as a lot of us are spending a lot of time sitting down at the moment it might be on um, Teams or Zoom meetings like this it might be because we're limited with uh, going out and seeing family and friends so yeah great advice um, there regarding exercise exercise. So we've had um, a couple of questions in. Please make sure you put your questions in the um, Q&A or in the chat box. Um, and Anna, I'm going to hand this one over to you because this is specifically about skincare. Um, and um, this question is, uh, if the patient has lymphedema, do you still advise to apply moisturisers in a downwards direction? We would do from a, I mean, with a back dermatology background, yeah. So I guess when we're doing our um, MLD, teaching patients SLD, we're encouraging them to do that without emollients, without any oils anyway. So putting emollients on would be a separate part of their um, regime. Um, so some patients still like to sort of try and encourage the food up, but we would just encourage putting the emollients on and making sure the very final move is in a downward direction so the hair follicles lie flat and they're obviously um, reducing the risk of folliculitis and a potential for infection. Thank you. And SLD and MLD, just to clarify, uh, SLD, simple massage that you do to yourself or with a, a carer or a significant other and manual lymphatic drainage is a massage that we would do as therapists for, for our patients in case um, you've not come across those terms before. Thank you, Anna. Margaret, <laughs> Sorry? did you want to add anything to that no no that's fine um, and we've had another question um, which um, relates to um, skincare products again. So perhaps Anna, you'd start us off um, on this one. So this is from a podiatry colleague who says that they often recommend emollients with a high urea content um, to reduce callus. And would this affect um, any other dermatological um, treatments for the legs? Okay, so I mean, again, we would um, often use emollients with a high urea content, particularly um, for areas of hyperkeratosis, thickened skin. Um, I'm not aware that it interacts with any other treatments. I mean, obviously, if you put in emollients and topical steroids on together, you're going to dilute the effect of the steroids, but we would never encourage them to put the two on together. So I'm not aware, I'm not sure if anybody else is. No, as you say, it's something we commonly use in mm. lymphoma management, so we've not really encountered any problems. And you were saying about not using the steroid and the emollient together. So what advice would you normally give? So we would encourage them to put the emollient on first and then the steroid um, once that's been absorbed, probably a couple of hours later, if possible, um, so that you're not diluting the effect of the steroid. So you're getting its um, most effective uh, use. Thank you. Um, we've had another question um, as well, which Lorraine, I'm going to um, ask you to take if that's OK. So this is asking, what advice do you have for anyone who's already contacted their GP about swelling, um, but hasn't actually had a referral to a lymphedema clinic? Hi, thanks. Sorry, Rebecca. I guess it depends what their GP said. So, you know, if someone's contacted their GP about swelling, then, you know, we want we'd want to know what what how long they'd had their swelling and if the GP has thought about what the cause of the swelling could be. So, you know, is this person on antihypertensive drugs and it, could that be the cause? Is this person overweight and has some appropriate advice been given about weight loss? So it's trying to understand the root cause of the um, swelling. And actually as lymphedema therapists, we don't want everyone with swelling straight away referred to us. We want the uh, a thought process to happen in general practice. First of all, what's the root cause of this? Um, are there any investigations that need to take place? Um, if it's both legs, we'd look at certain things. If it's one leg, we'd look at other things. So all these thought processes, we would expect the GP to, to, to be thinking of um, before making an appropriate referral to lymphedema. 
Um, sometimes, as Becky said at the beginning, swelling is an emergency. If it's a sudden onset, if it's painful, if it's one leg, we'd be thinking DVT. If it's a gradual both legs thing, then if, if, and if the GP is not sure, then, then it is an appropriate referral to unexplained swelling, is an appropriate referral to the uh, lymphedema service. It may be that we find the root cause, but we'd want some initial thought from, from the GP and some investigations really helpful if someone's elderly to have been investigated for heart failure and things like that before they're referred to us in the lymphedema clinic. Okay. Thank you. Anna, did you want to add anything there? No, I think I think I would agree with Lorraine that actually if there can be some thought rather than sort of just referring somebody straight away um, before um, before we see them. Often things can be sorted out, so actually we can move on with appropriate treatment once we get them into clinic. Margaret, uh, yeah, I would agree with that. I think there are some simple things um, that might be wrong that need to be checked out first or other treatment. But if it's going on for a long time and the swelling is persisting, regardless of what might have been tried, um, I think it's important that you do go back and ask for a referral to some uh, specialist. Because we often hear um, of people who have been investigated or um, been hanging on for years waiting for a, a diagnosis. So it's not something to leave for a long time if it's not improving. But I think um, there have, are things to check out first. I think one of the things we've not touched on there as well is, is for a lot of people, we know the reality is, is that there isn't a lymphedema service for their GP to refer to. So again, we may have an instance where if you have leg swelling um, as a result of some of the things we talked about earlier, maybe because your veins aren't working particularly well, maybe because you've had um, a leg ulcer in the past and your le leg ulcer's healed, but you've got swelling persists, um, maybe because you've had cellulitis a number of times and have got an infection uh, and have got a swelling as a result of that. Um, actually, there may not be a clinic locally for you um, because we know that there are um, some black holes as regard lymphedema services um, and I suppose from our perspective um, is there anything that as BLS we can say if you're not aware of a service in your area? Margaret? Yes I think if you're having difficulty either contact BLS or uh, Legs Matter too because we are involved with the, um, the coalition of Legs Matter so somebody will be able to give you some advice about where to go for help. Thank you. I think the exercise part um, is something that's really been explored more as part of understanding how we can improve our own health. Um, and certainly the Pilates sessions um, this week, morning and afternoon, morning and evening have been lovely. They carry on um, uh, tomorrow and Friday. So make sure if you haven't done one of those yet, you sign up to those. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, and we um, have been working hard to, to bring more exercise um, to everyone with our Everybody Can campaign. So it's is that something you'd like to tell us about, Margaret? Uh, yes, I think there are lots of tips on the website um, about um, different types of exercise because people can sometimes be a bit um, scared of some activities that it might cause more swelling. But um, by and large, if you take things easy and uh, build up gradually, there isn't really anything that you, um, you can't take on and it's all good for your health. It all helps. Um, but there's a couple of things on the session that was on before this. There was a great um, phrase that somebody suggested, somebody who didn't move around too much. And it was tiptoes before tea. So it was to encourage people before you sit down to your meal, before you do anything, um, either stand up and get, raise onto your tiptoes a few times. And if you do that as a matter of routine every time before you have a meal, uh, you'll be helping your, your legs and mm -hmm. feet um, in a great way. So there's lots of, lots of tips, um, any activity, um, everything counts. It's never too late to start um, doing something that's going to help in that respect. So never too late to start and top tips before tea. That's your uh, sign off. So uh, Anna, any final words? No, I think it's just important we all look after our legs and encourage those around us, whether it be family, friends, patients, to do the same. Thank you. Lorraine? 
Absolutely, yeah. I think just the main takeaway messages: don't ignore a little bit of swelling. Oh, it was like you <laughs> knew exactly what to say. I didn't. <laughs> so don't forget all the other brilliant sessions that are going on for the rest of the week. Make sure that you really uh, sign up for everything, and it's all available afterwards as well on YouTube and on Facebook. So make sure you make the most of this opportunity. Um, and also, um, if you do have questions that haven't been um, answered, then uh, you can contact Legs Matter via the website for any personal advice. So thank you very much, and goodbye from us. Thank you. Okay, bye, bye. Bye.